And finally, B2.4 mechanical energy. When we say mechanical energy, we're talking about the total energy that an object has due to its motion and its position, both. So in other words, mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy of the object as well as its potential energy. You can symbolize that by saying EM for mechanical energy is equal to EK plus EP. If you break down kinetic energy and potential energy, of course, then mechanical energy is equal to uh, kinetic energy, which is one-half mv squared, and potential energy, which is mass times gravity times height. But once again, let's, let's do some of these and see how this works. We have a seagull flying horizontally at 8.00 meters per second, carries a clam that has a mass of 300 grams in its beak. Calculate the total mechanical energy of the clam when the seagull is 30 meters above the ground. I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to make these grams into kilograms by converting this into 0 0.300 kilograms because I know that all these calculations are based upon kilograms, meters, and seconds. So those grams have got to be converted. Well, we were told that the mechanical energy is equal to the uh, kinetic energy as well as the potential energy uh, added together. Now, that means that the kinetic energy is uh, mass times velocity squared divided by 2. Okay, so here we go. The, the mass was 0 0.300 uh, kilograms, and the velocity it was flying at was times uh, 8 Point zero zero meters per second mass times velocity that has to be squared and divided by two and add to that the potential energy well the mass was zero point three zero zero kilograms multiplied by gravity on earth which is nine point eight one meters per second squared and then multiply that by the the height above the ground which was 30.0 meters. So there's all our numbers. Now it's time to uh, get busy with our calculator. So let's have a look here. Um, 0.3 multiplied by uh, 8 meters per second squared, and that's going to be squared. So hit the square key, and then don't forget to divide your answer by 2. And what do we get? We get uh, 9.6 joules. Now add to that the potential energy. So we're going to have to do a little bit of math on that one. So we've got uh, 0.3 kilograms uh, multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared multiplied by a height of 30 meters above the ground. And what do we get? We get an additional 88.29 joules. So there's my kinetic energy and my potential energy and now all I've got to do is basically add these two guys together on the calculator. So what is 9 decimal 6 plus 88.29? What do I get? 97.89. So we get 97.89 joules in total. Um, looks like I'm going to have to round this off to just three significant digits. So I guess more appropriately, we would say this is 97.9 joules of a total mechanical energy. Now here's one a bit backwards. We have a 55 kilogram high jump athlete who leaps into the air to try to clear a bar. At the top of the leap, the athlete has a total mechanical energy worth 3.00 times 10 to the third joules, and he's moving at a velocity of 8.33 meters per second. Calculate the gravitational potential energy of this athlete. Well, now they, they tell us what the mechanical energy is. So the original equation says mechanical energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy. We want to find the potential energy. Well, this isn't too hard because all we're doing is adding numbers. So the potential energy is simply going to be the mechanical energy subtract the kinetic energy. Well, we already know some of these answers. We, we already know, for example, that the mechanical energy was 3.00 times 10 to the third joules. Now, what about the kinetic energy? Well, we're going to have to calculate that one, I'm afraid. Kinetic energy, if you remember, is mass times velocity squared divided by 2. So the mass of this athlete is 55.0 kilograms. Um, his velocity was 8.33 meters per second, and that has to be squared. Again, kids are always forgetting that. And don't forget to divide that by 2. 
Okay, next step, 3.00 times 10 to the third joules. I'll just leave that. Take away, now let's do a little bit of calculating here. We've got uh, 55 uh, multiplied by 8 decimal 33 squared. Don't forget to square that thing. And then uh, divide that by 2. All right, I've got uh, 1,908.5. Um, one nine four seven five joules. Now, don't don't round off. When you're in the middle of a calculation, we're not done yet. Don't round off until we get to the very very end of this thing. So I have one more step to go. I've got to do some uh, subtraction here. So I've got three point zero zero, and the exponent on that one is third power, and I'm going to subtract from that uh, one thousand nine hundred and eight decimal. One nine four seven five, and what do I get? Well, I get this. I get one zero nine one, and I get a whole lot of decimal points here. Uh, point eight zero five, yada yada yada, joules. Now, if I go back to my original data, I'm really only allowed to get away with having three significant digits in my data, so I better chop this thing down to three, and maybe an easy way to do that would be to convert this into scientific notation. What if I called this 1.09, there's my three significant digits, times 10 to the third power joules, and that takes care of my significant digit problem by just making it into scientific notation. Last one, a construction worker drops a 2.00 kilogram hammer from a roof. Uh, when the hammer is 50 meters above the ground, it has a total mechanical energy of 1.88 times 10 to the third joules. Calculate the kinetic energy. Well, we know that mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So if you want to find the kinetic energy, it's, it's really pretty easy. Just take the mechanical energy and subtract or take away the potential energy. Well, I know what the mechanical energy is. It's 1.88 times 10 to the third joules. They gave me that one. Take away the potential. Now, how do you find potential? Potential is mass times gravity times height. Okay, uh, the mass was 2.00 kilograms. Gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the height of the hammer was 50.0 meters above the ground. So I can leave this first guy, 1.88 times 10 to the third power joules. Now, let's get out the calculator and figure out what this thing is worth. Uh, what is 2.00 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared and multiplied by 50.0 meters above the ground? What do we get? Well, I get exactly 981 joules. All right, 981 joules. So what's the difference? Uh, all I've got to do now is simply subtract. If I have 1.88 to the power of 3, and if I subtract 981, what do I get? I get 899. And so the kinetic energy of that hammer was 899 joules. And we'll practice more on these in the classroom.